So, okay. So, welcome everybody to another edition of the Omaha Bar Association Bar Talk podcast. I'm Dave Summers, Executive Director of the Omaha Bar Association. I said podcast. Uh, we've been podcasting a while. We've been virtual chatting for, for quite a while, so I should, uh, I should update my intro. Uh, we are virtual chatting on the Friday before Labor Day weekend uh, with our 2L Creighton rep for the Omaha Bar Association Young Lawyers Division, Stephen Asante. Stephen, thanks for joining us. Good to be with you, Dave. So um, we're we're here today. Um, you're back in school, and that's that's saying something, right? <laughs> it surely, it surely is. We, you know, in March we uh, we we went virtual and everything um, during your first year. Can you talk about how that was um, and how it's now back in school? How it's been? Sure. No. So <laughs> certainly it was an interesting experience. Um, certainly was unprecedented. Certainly caught us all off guard. Um, one day on the Friday before, we're all saying have a good spring break. And before you knew it, we haven't seen each other since. <laughs> we haven't seen each other since all the way to August. So um, we're just getting told, you know, to go get our books as soon as we can and just book it to the law school. And um, the transition was um, just it just caught us all off guard and we, we all really didn't know what to do, but um, credit to our administration and credit to just our students as well as we adapted in just really just a, a almost weird kind of calm way of, of, of just seamlessly transitioning to um, online and working together and emailing professors and keeping in, co in constant communication and um, as weird as it was, we got through it. Um, we still got were able to learn uh, relatively the, the same way just uh, just it was just a lot of a different kind of experience because a lot of people have just at least the interaction part of going talking with professors was a lot different but we got through it and uh, went through that as well as the summer courses um, with uh, relatively very very minor hic hiccups and just working together to get through it so um, weird <laughs> um, a little bit hard, but at the same time, we it was something that we got through. Uh, great, just a great group of people to to be with to get through it. So, and now, so as I understand it from our chat uh, before this Zoom call, some of your classes are remote, some some of your classes are in person. Uh, that's it's kind of flexible as things go along. Um, it, it have they even changed it that a class that meet twice a week is now meeting once a week in person, so that that exposure level has changed? I mean, just what's it like, you know, being at the law school? We're not the law school, the OBA is not the law school right now. We don't know what's going on. Give sure. us insight. Sure, no, so yeah, it is, um, it stay, it's stayed relatively consistent, but as far as the actual classes, some are online, some are in person, some are hybrid, uh, just depends on what class you're in. Um, but as far as um, how that is, it's, Again, it just goes down to, is it something that's ideal? Of course not, <laughs> um, but in, in it's certainly, certainly there are bumps in the road, but as far as the staying together in class and, and keeping engaged, that one has not changed. Um, professors, again, have been relatively, uh, have done this well as far as adapting to maintain communications with students. Um, but uh, again, is, is, is it the, the best course? Uh, I'm a, I'm personally, I'm a person who likes to be in, in person. I like to be with professors. I love to, like to interact with students, things of that nature. But um, again, just just in a weird way, just people have been adapting uh, rather well um, to it uh, as far as engaging with professors. Just people are still um, engaging. They're still working with small groups and in classes, things of that nature. So um, the adaptation to Zoom uh, has been quick. But it's much like one all year, just like a, st a steep learning curve, and we all just kind of got through it, so, and we're still getting through it. So, uh, when you're studying and things like that, do they allow you to even be in the library for studying, or is it you have to you have to leave the building if you are not in the class? Well, uh, so, how are they, how are they yes, uh, adhering very very strictly to uh, safety protocols uh, as far as that's concerned. Group study has been. Uh, pretty much prohibited as far as, you know, studying in school. So they're, they're doing everything to possibly make sure that everybody's social distance, um, making sure that everything is clean, 
for students, making sure that students are adhering to those policies by cleaning their tables, um, making sure that everybody, when they leave, they're, they're spraying it down, but when people are even coming in, that they're spraying it down. Um, and they have those pretty well laid out for us to make sure that we're uh, taking care of that. Um, but as far as that's concerned, yeah, the, the library is open strictly for, for law students right now, but even for law students, it's pretty much very, everything is socially distanced, one person per table. And again, people have been adhering to that uh, relatively well. So um, again, not ideal, but <laughs> well, it, it's, it, it reminds me of uh, when I was studying for the bar exam, I had just come to town. I didn't know anybody. It was December um, and January. I was in the Korean Law Library. Nobody wanted to sit at my table, you know, anyway. So I was socially distancing back in 2009 before it became, in 2010, before it became a trend. Before it was the cool right? <laughs> I didn't know anybody. It, but I'll just say it was, it was tough because, um, you know, learning in, in group settings, I think, is an important part of, of law school, I, learning in general. But I think uh, you can learn a lot in, in those group settings. So absolutely. Uh, no, that is one thing that I uh, relatively that's one thing I have. I had a small study group uh, while, while I was in the one L year. That is one thing that we desperately missed um, about that. And that's just one thing, the camaraderie of just building that community um, and two, just learning from each other, learning different uh, ways and different habits. Um, and that has been something that just having that study room and having that, not just the study room and not just having your study group, but that sense of, you know, routine of being in that study room and picking that one study room that you study in together um, and being there sometimes until late, late nights, so a lot later than you would, you would expect. But um, there's just, just sense a lot of just great memories that you, you built from that. And uh, you know, just working together through it. But um, that's another thing. Are you doing any Facebook, uh, you know, live, or you guys doing any groups on on Teams, or are you using any platforms, FaceTiming to to do it? Yes, else? yes, and that's actually what I was gonna bring up. That's one thing that we've adapted to. So I know from my study group, we have we've uh, gone to Zoom together, and just honestly, there's sometimes where we're not even saying that much to each other. We're just kind of studying, and it's kind of so we stop in right in the middle and say, you know what? This actually kind of helps because even though we're not talking together, even though we're not in a room, it kind of brings in some semblance of normalcy. Now, not ideal, and we would like to come back to be in this in those study rooms together. And uh, I'll even openly admit, when we first come, walked into the library, um, I know I walked in with one of my my study uh, uh, partners, and we were just looking at every room, just wondering, is there just one room <laughs> that we can stay in together? Um, but you know, it's, it's until time is, is right and get, make sure that everybody is safe and everything's going well. But yeah, we do miss that study, but we have to adapt to it, so. Sure. Um, Stephen, I don't know anything about your background. Um, where'd you grow up? Uh, you know, where'd you go to undergrad? why did you go to law school? All that. Sure, sure. So I grew up in the Chicagoland area. So um, Naperville for uh, those who, who know or are familiar with the area, the suburbs of Chicago. Um, I moved around a lot <laughs> uh, during my during my youth for my uh, uh, dad's job. So lived in the West Coast for a little bit, lived in the Northeast for a little bit. So know a little bit about that. Lived in Iowa. i um, also lived in Indiana. So stayed in the Midwest as well. Um, my undergrad experience. Um, <laughs> I know I'm in Nebraska, uh, but I say this not reluctantly, but I, I just aware I went to the University of Iowa. <laughs> um, go Hawks. Um, <laughs> but no, yeah, so I went to the University of Iowa and majored in marketing. So um, I was actually in between law and business when I was um, trying to figure it out. Um, and I actually ran to a business teacher who taught intro to law and he said, go for business first. Just trust me on this, try to go for business first. So I tried that out. Um, it was fun. I enjoyed it, but it just didn't feel like that was, that was fulfilling uh, what I wanted to do. Um, so I actually went to Creighton before I came to law school for my uh, negotiation and conflict, conflict resolution uh, degree, uh, and then also got a certificate in, in mediation. Loved that program. Didn't even feel like it was school. Just felt like it was just something I enjoyed. Um, and then worked in compliance for a little bit and realized that working in that and talked with a lawyer who actually went to Creighton Law and he told me about working in collaborative law. He said that lawyers, lawyers are not always, it's not always about finding it out. It's, sometimes it's just having that knowledge and working together. So that's something that you can easily do and work your NCR degree with that. 
Um, and I've always had a passion for law. So that's something that was that just burned within me. And I and I wanted to go to law school, have not regretted that uh, that decision. That's great. No, I'm, I and now I'm a transplant, so I don't know this. Is there a term for a Hawkeye Creighton mix? I know there's the Jasker, the, the Husk J. Is, 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 is I have not heard that one. No, that is that is I, you know what? That is something that we <laughs> Some IP, some kind of IP stuff that we can hey, work on. That's right. We can make flags and sell swag, right? Yeah. Um, so, okay. So you're you're planning to, to most likely stay in the Omaha area and, yes. and practice. Yes. That's right. Um, so you're in your second year, and I know everything's different, but you have one year underneath your belt. You're in the middle of it. Um, how are you feeling about it? How's you know, is it, is it living up to expectation of, of what you thought law school would be and uh, and what you learned, or did the whole justice for all kind of go out the window in that first year towards class, and you're still trying to recover from how law school kind of breaks down some of those things that you're thinking it was going to be, or how do you see it so far? No, that's that's a that's a that's a good question. Um, I mean, now granted, with the what we're going through right now, that I think that kind of adds a dimension to a different dimension to it. Um, I don't. I wouldn't say that it's been something that I, I did not expect. Um, is it is something that kind of adds on to it? It kind of you kind of feel like that that situation of like where something you're building something, and you know, like back in undergrad, where you kind of learn something's may not be pertaining to what you want to do. Um, so it's kind of like you throw it in the back burner, but like you genuinely feel that everything you learned, there's a reason for it. And as someone who's who worked in conflict resolution, I'm very much a person who looks into why, <laughs> not just what and how, but I really look into what's the deeper meaning in, into why this is happening. Everything that, they, that is done in law is for a reason, um, you know, the, it's to solve a problem. So looking into the more complexities of those kind of problems and uh, working to see, okay, why did why did I learn this in contracts? You know, why did I learn this in civil procedure? Um, and bringing it to uh, even look look at things such as I'm in business associations right now, and I as someone who has a business background, I love that kind of I love that class. But look into okay, why is it important to have certain things in those in those kind of contracts? Why is it important to know about ratification, all that kind of stuff? Moving into it, um, that is something that. Learning that why and building off of it is something that I did expect, and that's something that I do enjoy. Um, it certainly, they like they say, the one L they try to scare you, <laughs> two L they try to work you. You're definitely starting to feel that <laughs> that as we as you progress. Um, so you always have to keep that in the back of your mind that you say you you know not as much break time. Make sure that you're using your time very judiciously. Um, but yeah, no, nothing that's been super surprising, but definitely something that you make sure that you're preparing for and keeping your eyes open for the next step. Absolutely. And now we're in the fall. And if I, if my memory uh, serves me well, usually I'd be walking into the law school and there'd be people in suits, um, nervously waiting outside of, um, you know, meeting rooms uh, for OCIs, for on campus interviews. Um, I, is that process still, do you know anything about that? Pro I mean, it's still going on. People are just doing Zoom interviews or going into offices maybe or something like that. That's, that's still in the works and everything like that. I'm not a hundred percent sure on that uh, that on that uh, aspect of it. Um, I'm sure there are people who are doing. I'm certain who are probably doing that on on the individual level. But as far as the fall OCIs, uh, I feel that possibly I'm I'm not a hundred I'm not a hundred percent certain on that. So <laughs> do not quote me on what's going on with that one. But I know that people are are just trying to to um, stay on top of it as far as with their employers and and things of that nature. As far and again, even looking at employers. Uh, there, everybody has their own individual way that they're looking at this kind of situation. I know that there are people in the summer who unfortunately had to can't had to just cancel their internships altogether. There's some people who stayed on and it just is, it all varies by the employer. So I know that that's going to be a crazy situation with, with those, uh, what's going on. Yeah. I, I, I feel for the law students right now because you know, the, the anxiety that you deal with, with school, but also, you know, employment after school, employment during school, leading to employment after school, all that, um, it, there's a lot and throw this in the mix and people saying, well, you know, we're going to, we're going to hold off on the, the hiring for, for next, or next summer until in springtime. 
man, I, you don't need another, <laughs> another <laughs> thing to worry about, but, um, it, it's, a, that's a difficult situation. I, I think, you know, pulling back maybe Steven, sure. I, I think that there is a lot of, um, opportunities for new grads, new attorneys to find work because of the, um, the boomers retiring, maybe even more so, um, retiring, if their retirement's in, if their retirement investments in the right spot, retiring now uh, with all that's going on, and so I think that there's there's more room out there to, to necessarily get a job and get going in the career. It's sure. just a matter of getting there, right? It's a matter of getting through law school. It's a matter of passing the bar, which a lot a lot of Creighton grads did um, this last summer. They went ahead and, and they did that, um, and so. It's just, and we've talked to Dean Frisch about this, um, you know, and trying to make sure that we're, we're we're catching those those you know graduating students and we're getting them into the practice because it's just it, it's not the you, gra- you graduate on in May you know twentieth you start your bar prep you take your July bar you get sworn in you know September and you're off and running it's just the whole schedule is all up in the air right so, right. Yeah. Um, so did, did you do any, uh, anything for work-wise this last summer or, or do you have anything that you're hoping to do uh, this coming summer? So my hope is to um, continue is to uh, continue with um, the internship that I had. So I unfortunately had the that I had to deal with the actual, you know, falling of falling out of something that you prepared for and is nationwide a uh, whole internship got completely canceled. Uh, on us, so um, not even just in Omaha, but Washington D.C., and it was for a, corp- a corporation. So um, that was a corporate decision. They tried as hard as they they possibly could. Again, it's uh, something they have to work through. But again, you have to adapt to it. So I just decided to take classes. But they, um, uh, I do keep. I am also keep my eyes open for possibly if they if everything works well. Um, since I was going to have it before, to continue on with it. Um, to work with it, but again, having my background in compliance and working that, working with that one for uh, two semesters, that as far as the um, the experience, that that one wasn't that much of an issue. But as far as just build, building off of it and and working with in a new corporation, that'd be that'd be fantastic. So um, yeah, keep my keep my options open, keep my eyes I, I, my eyes open for other options, but um, just trying to you know stay stay on top of it with that. So. You know, you, you talk about DC. That I was, that was my home for about seven years. So uh, it, it it has a, a dear place in my heart. DC is not what it was when I left. Um, on many levels, uh, it isn't what what it was when I left. But yeah. I, I love the place. Um, it, I mean, it's the best summer you could ever experience uh, for sure. If you're a student at any level, sure, um, sure. So that's yeah. Hopefully that can work out. Um, yes. But you know. Um, Looking ahead, you've talked about your your ADR um, and, and everything like that background, and working towards that. What what would be an ideal job for you, Stephen? What what if you could if you could just draw out exactly what you'd love to be doing in in five ten years? What would it be? Now, granted, I keep my options open. <laughs> oh, yeah. no, I'm not going to try to lock myself into my future right yeah, now. <laughs> you're not painting yourself into a corner. No, I, I mean, for no. me, it's professional golfer. So like, you know, yeah, no, that's not, that's not stopping me from doing other things. So. Exactly. No, I am looking, I am looking uh, possibly to be working in, in collaborative law. So um, something along those lines, working with contracts, working with uh, contract drafting, working in, uh, even possibly what 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 I did before, just working in compliance and and those kind of situations, um, I actually enjoyed it. Um, I never would have thought something as far as like insurance law would be something that I would be having fun with, but I certainly enjoyed it. But even every aspect of business, just working with you know contract drafting and working with mergers and acquisitions, um, staying so staying in in the business realm, but um, ideally is using what I what I learned in my conflict resolution um, degree and my certificate in mediation to work out solving problems with people. I generally, that's something that just comes out when people have or have issues. That's kind of like where I leap up to the, the challenge. Like some people, they, they hear conflict and they say, you know what, that's for you guys. Uh, you know, that's great. Um, I hope that works out for you. I'm more looking into 
why was that? What happened? <laughs> what happened there? Where was the company? Where was the, com the communication breakdown? Um, so I really like to look into the whys. I really like to look into the intric intricacies of issues that people have more in the business kind of realm because a lot of people say, oh, in family law, nah, I would. I, that, that, that is a that is a market that that is that's for for some people that's that one is not mine but um business for looking for business kind of issues and working through towards that as far as contracts and as well as um for um you know comic comic resolution as far and contracts those those are uh, my kind of goals you know um one thing that i i have some background in i talk to a lot of people that do it including a few past presidents um uh, of the Omaha Bar Association, which is in-house counsel um, as, as a position that you're really fixing problems before they be become problems. You're, you're, you know, catching them before they become issues. You're, you're working things up before they get to that, that stage. Um, it, it's, it's something you gotta, you gotta kind of get your teeth wet, you know, in, in a firm setting first, usually. Um, there are a few people that have jumped straight to it, but uh, it, it sounds, it sounds like you have plenty of options in front of you, but very exciting. Um, yes. You look at you look at things very similar to me, and, and you got to understand what's making them the way they are. And um, yeah, that's good. Um, so okay, we talked about a lot here. Um, what are you doing to stay sane in the world where you're studying all the time, right? You're not seeing people as much as you want to. You know what what what, what do you do for fun? What's your What's your release from all this, all this crazy that we're dealing with, and and the crazy of law school? Honestly, is one staying in constant constant communication with my friends. Uh, that is one thing. Just making sure I'm talking with them. Um, me personally, <laughs> a lot of 2K. <laughs> oh yeah, <laughs> okay. A lot of a lot of just playing some, you know, some 2K. If you can't, you know, be in a gym or that's not safe or whatever, um, <laughs> getting some kind of release. Um, watching sports as well as well as that's a that's that was. Uh, my running joke that I tell people is that as soon as when I heard the NBA season was canceled, uh, everything else just kind of felt like, you know, that was, I was already numb at that point, <laughs> but, <laughs> but just trying to, trying to watch sports and, and stay on top of that one, but, and, and getting out and just taking walks at, at the very least. And, and more importantly, I think it's just more keeping things in perspective and really taking time to, to reflect and put things, put things in perspective and just know that, you know, what's going on not just taking it as it comes, but really just taking a step back every every now and then to just say, okay, you know, this is what's going on. <laughs> These are things you have to prepare for, that kind of stuff. Absolutely. And yeah, what's important, right? Um, the, the hustle and bustle of everything sort of stopped and it allows us to finally take a look back and say, okay, well, yeah, <laughs> that, that, there are things here that uh, are important to us and and need to be addressed and everything like that. Um, you know, we talk about 2K for a second. I'm going to back up. Uh, I remember watching like ESPN or ESPN2 probably, and I watched an hour of just some dudes playing 2K. Uh, like, I, 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 I don't know if it was like some some e gaming thing, but like I had no idea. I was just like I was watching other people play video games. There's nothing on TV. There was no sports, and I was like. You wow. needed something. You really Literally. needed something. At that point, you could have watched Marbles game rolled, and you would have said, oh, "Which one wins?" <laughs> I was like, "I'm so desperate for sports. This is crazy." <laughs> I think, exactly. I think, yes. I think PGA came back the next week, and that kind of filled the void there. I would have um, watched it. Yes. <laughs> it's uh, oh, especially I mean nowadays with the 4K res and and everything like that. I mean, I. I Watching sports is so much fun um, now more than ever, and Absolutely. Fo following people on Instagram and and social media and and hearing their voice um, outside of it and just knowing the people so much more. It seems like I don't know. It's, Absolutely, no, you're. I 100 percent agree with you on that. Yeah. On that. Absolutely. Um. So, how how do you see this? You know, crystal ball. I love asking this question. Tough situation, but. How do you see the the future of law practice changing from your perspective right now when you're learning how to practice law and you're, and you're seeing professors maybe having a hard time saying, you know, this is this is what the law says. This is this is how it is. But everything's different right now. And right. and you're sort of seeing that, you know, looking ahead, prognosticating, we're not going to hold you to this. But wh where, where do you think things are going? 
That is a wow. That's a big question. question. Big question. Uh, no right answer. No wrong answer. No, no. <laughs> um, I I think that well, uh, from just a just a, from an administrative standpoint, I think a lot more of understanding of just of rem, of just remote um, just learning as far as the legal education system goes. Um, that's that's going to be a lot more. Um, I think people are a lot more just aligned and more in tune with how that goes um, and adapting to it. Uh, I think for people as far as what was previously known as snow days, I don't know if that's going to exist anymore. <laughs> Sorry for people in the past, but. Um, as a North Dakotan, I, I know snow days very well, yes. <laughs> so I think as far as that's, that's concerned, as far as the legal practice, I that is a very great question. I, I, I really don't know what the future holds for for that as far as how people go about that. I know um, just looking at how even Supreme Court cases are being are being argued and just court cases in general, they're being held over Zoom now. Um, as far as um, how people communicate with, with 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 the judges. And so I I feel like the importance of technology, I think the importance of being um, technologically savvy and being um, read up on on how to to do things. I feel like there's still a learning curve that um, some people who may have thought I just never want to use it ever. Um, it's almost like on the start of this live broadcast as well. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's just more of just feeling like of of making of of saying that okay, like now people have to know how how to do it rather than it's something that is more of. Um, of just kind of an extra skill set is almost like it's more of a of a required skill set of I know when I, we were moving over to zoom I I was like okay what is zoom how does how does that work and I specifically just took time just personally just to get on zoom by myself just to learn on how do these controls work how does it work when you when you mute how do you work how does it work with turning on your video how does backgrounds work how does you know how does all these kind of intricacies all these intricacies work because a lot of things can go awry and making sure that you can um, adapt to those kind of situations and fix them as quickly as possible. I feel like that is something that we're noticing even, I know I was, um, I was it's not something that I tried to, to tell about myself, but I do like to watch like C-SPAN and just try to watch those kind of arguments that happen and see that, you know, what's going on with them and how they, how they communicate. Um, we can still see that there are hiccups, even along just even on, on the highest course, um, and how do people adapt to that? So that I think that adaptation to technology is going to be the, the major um, um, trend. And and I think it um, I think it may be seen also with how somebody wants to practice, you know, in Omaha and they want to practice in LA and New York City, and now now they can right the the physical proximity isn't nearly as important as it yes. once was um so so having a practice that's not just geographically centered in one spot and that's also the proliferation of the multi-state uh for the bar exam um so that's all we're not held to you you went to law school in omaha you passed yes. the nebraska bar that's where you get to practice because that that's how it's done now it's it's you know it's portable um and and it's you can you can be a great attorney and you, you can't say oh I, I can't help you because you know you're over there well now we can do it as long as jurisdictions tech you know catch up and i'm sure they will when it comes to to licensing and stuff like that also i'm hopeful Stephen, that maybe this means that attorneys can help more right yes. that 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 we can pool together our our knowledge and resource and our abilities to to help um you know instead of saying oh i can't i'm sorry i can't help you. you you live three hours away and the cost to get there would be prohibitive i could do your case it's just that it, it's gonna be so expensive um hopefully you know now you can you can get on your computer and you can have a console with somebody and you can e-file and you can zoom hearing and and you can efficiently help out people um, so that we can do more good. We can help more people, hopefully, right? Oh, I absolutely agree with that. I absolutely agree with that. And that, that's, that is something that I feel like is going to be more profound, just the reach that um, attorneys can have towards uh, people who, who need help. Um, 
and that's another thing that we are seeing is just that people are be able, being able to have that reach um, in the legal community of clients who, again, they might be out, they might be out of state. They might have issues of transportation. Now, it may even be within that state. It might be in that within municipality, but just transportation, like all that kind of all those kind of situations of costs, um, being able to help people. Um, no, no matter what the barriers may be, whether it be financial or transportation or what have you, um, that is, that is, yes, that I, I 100% agree of just having that reach to assist others in, in their time of need. Broadband is a right, not a privilege. Come on, Congress, <laughs> get everybody on the Zoom. Let's do it. Huh? Um, well, I've taken a lot of your time. I've, I've rescheduled this way too many times. You've been great on rescheduling. Is there anything? Was there was there a question that I was supposed to ask you that I didn't, Stephen? Is there something you want you want to get across to the uh, the potential future employers, the 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 law school administrators that are watching this or that were watching this a little bit ago? Um, anything else you wanna you wanna get out there to the world? I will honestly say, um, and this is I mean I'm not being told to say this, but this this is honestly how I feel about it. <laughs> but uh, I, I genuinely feel that our uh, the administration at Creighton University has been absolutely uh, wonderful um, with this with the students and as as far as adapting. Um, they have been in constant communication with us um, and making sure that we are safe and making sure that we are aware of what's going on and what we need to do. Um, I think that is actually what what's helped our situation progress. Um, and that's also that's a credit to one, the administration, Dean Frechet, everyone, uh, but as well as to the students because we've had to respond to those kind of situations. And um, honestly, I, I generally feel that we just is the it, it almost feels like it's like the right people at the right place at the right time, the, the way that people are adapting to it and working together. And I think that's a call for for all of us just to to be able to um, you know, be able to to work together, those who are in positions of uh, authority and of power, just to make sure that we're given clear um, guidance. And then those who are being, who are, you know, being told that we're just working together uh, just as a people and then working together with uh, our institutions to make things better for each other. I think that's what is a testament, is, I think we are a testament to that. And that's, I think that's the reason why we're uh, moving forward. And, just I honestly I just give major kudos to to everyone at Creighton. It, it's a tough situation and and I think we were already having this discussion before but the value proposition um, for for law school for you know for entry into the legal profession for sure um, and and now when when there's remote learning you know what what is the value of what you're getting and it's an ongoing conversation it's certainly being changed by the minute with uh, with what's going on right now and I have to. I have to second what you what you've said. Is that I think the administration at Creighton's great in in their focus on this and in their solutions. Um, I think University of Nebraska Law School has has, has done a, a pretty good job as well. Sure. Different institution with different issues, um, for sure. But yeah, um, it, it's it's a big ask um, for the students for the administration. Uh, for the legal community, and I, I'm glad to see everybody stepping up. I appreciate you uh, taking some time on your Friday afternoon uh, to, to talk with me. Uh, I'll update your uh, 2K handle off off the air uh, for sure. I'm, I'm, again, I'm, I'm probably just gonna be watching, um, not not playing. Um, but best of uh, best of luck to you, and I, I'm hopeful that we can maybe do a small socially distant, like outdoor sort of. Young Lawyers Division um, get together happy hour here shortly, and those who want to show up can. Um, and so hopefully we can meet in person there if, if you're down with that. Um, but thank you again, and uh, good luck, and have a good weekend. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Dave. Pleasure to be with you. All right. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.